We're heading behind closed doors to find out what really goes on inside the Pryor factory. We'll head to Whistler Olympic Park to meet a ski jumping official. And then we'll introduce you to a Whistler photographer who captures some stunning evening images. Stay with us. That's on this episode of Go See to Sky. Welcome to Go See to Sky. I'm your host, Heather Butts, hanging out in Whistler's Creekside. Chris Pryor started making snowboards for his buddies out of his garage. Now, years later, his skis and boards can be found on mountaintops around the world. They're said to be some of the best handcrafted sports equipment there is, and the products are made right here in Whistler. We decided to take a little trip down to the factory in Function Junction and see what Pryor is all about. It's a name recognized around the world by skiers, snowboarders, backcountry powder hounds and all mountain riders. Pryor has built a reputation for its design and construction of high performance equipment. They pride themselves on their craftsmanship, easily showcased during factory tours. Hi Chris. Heather, hi, how are you? Good, how are you? Well. Yes. I've seen your boards, I've seen your skis all on the mountain, but I want to know how they're made. Mm, you know what? I think we could probably provide that service for you, but okay. uh, the crew's downstairs and uh, he'd be more than happy to show you around. Okay, let's have a look. Excellent. The Pryor story began in 1989. Chris Pryor went from manufacturing high-end windsurfers to custom snowboards for friends and pro riders. It was a real sort of cult underground following amongst the high-end pros. I never advertised, but they always found my number. I had a four-car garage and it was, I heated it with a fireplace. Close to 25 years later, the prior name holds true to its roots, maintaining a high standard for quality rather than quantity. While it has grown from five to more than 1,000 snowboards, splitboards, and skis per year, Pryor continues to manufacture custom, handcrafted equipment. Located in Function Junction, it's a small shop with a big reputation. So Chris, this is where it all begins. This is the, the, the start of the ski and the snowboard. We have, uh, if you look around here, the, a variety of different uh, templates that represent the shape that we're using. We call it a sandwich construction, just like making a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, just different layers depending on how much you want. We dictate the taste of the flavor or the ride. So we have a top sheet material here. It's a really thin uh, nylon, very durable. The top of the board has a thin nylon protective sheet which supports the graphics, many of which are designed by local artists. Beneath it are layers of fiberglass, metal and a wood core made from maple or aspen. Once all pieces are assembled, it's on to the laminating room, a critical part of the process. The uh, structural integrity of the board or ski depends on how well it, the materials have been uh, glued together properly. If there's one dry spot, one area that was not sufficient amount of glue, it could potentially create an issue with the product. Not often viewed on traditional tours, we're given a quick snapshot of the prior press, where products spend roughly 30 minutes under high pressure and heat. So this is what the um, product book looks like when it comes off the press. All the various layers have been laminated and that soft epoxy has solidified. So that gives it the integrity, the strength, the performance characteristics. And once it's all cut off, the ski or the snowboard comes out looking like this. The excess material is cut off with a bandsaw and the product begins to take shape. But it's far from over. The sidewalls are cleaned up and the base goes through a rigorous grinding process. So Chris, this is basically the final stage of the process. The final step, yes, it's the unveiling of the artist's graphics. The protective layer is removed and the product is given a final inspection before it's ready to be picked up or shipped out. Everybody downstairs, everybody in the shop is extremely passionate about what they do, so they are conscious of making sure attention to detail is impeccable. They don't let one part slide through that could possibly in any which way dictate to an inferior product. From start to finish, it's a unique, hands-on process, all part of the pride behind the prior name. Mm -hmm. 
You can demo prior equipment directly from their shop before deciding what custom board or ski you want to make. And if you head down there, tell them I sent you. Well, the 2014 Winter Olympics are just a few weeks away and the excitement is building. But it's not just athletes that will be traveling from Whistler to Sochi for the Games. Whistler's Nordic Sport Manager will be making the trek and he'll be taking on one of the most important roles, a technical delegate. I certainly have an office component to my job, but I, I love getting out. Preparing the biathlon range isn't necessarily a part of John Heilig's job requirements, but he has a hard time keeping himself away from all the action. You learn an awful lot about uh, the facilities by working on them, and uh, I work with a huge number of people, and uh, that's the fun part of the job. Heilig is the Nordic Sport Manager at Whistler Olympic Park. Nestled in the picturesque Callahan Valley, the venue is home to Nordic events including cross-country skiing, ski jumping and biathlon. It's an amazing venue. It uh, has all the disciplines that I like working with. It's uh, really a great place. Heilig admits the sport of biathlon isn't his specialty, but as sport manager, he'll do anything to ensure an event runs smoothly, even if that means grabbing a rake to help his colleagues prepare for a race. His most memorable event at this venue was the 2010 Winter Olympics. It was pretty amazing, the highlight of my life actually, and I think for many of the people I worked with. His true passion lies here, on the ramp used for ski jumping, a sport he retired from in 1988 but never left. He continued to be involved as a coach and sport manager. He even commentated during the 2006 Olympics. Now, Heilig will take on the role of technical delegate for ski jumping and Nordic combined during the 2014 Winter Olympics in Sochi. Each of the ski disciplines and probably many other sports, uh, they have a jury and the jury makes the decisions on fairness and safety. That's basically the role of the jury and the technical delegate is the head of the jury. Let's do width of in run, then I think we want to do 10 meters. His athletic background and knowledge of the sport are what make this technical delegate or TD a perfect candidate. He's responsible for measuring the various components of the jump, such as the in-run, angle of takeoff and depth of track. All are critical aspects which contribute to athlete safety and fairness during an Olympic competition. Eight meters perfect. These athletes have trained virtually their whole lives. Uh, it's the most important day of their life and they, they want it to be fair, and, and we want it to be fair as well. The cross-country portion is similar. For this, Heilig will strap on his own gear to give the course a thorough inspection. I think the biggest thing with cross-country is actually making sure that the track conditions are good, and in Sochi it'll be a challenge. Uh, it's, it's quite warm, uh, so we'll have to use snow hardeners, Keeping the track firm won't be his only challenge. Once the course is deemed safe and fair, the TD will oversee the flow of competition to ensure a successful event, all while working under the pressure of the Olympic Games in a foreign country. The biggest thing is it's culturally very different. Uh, and like I say, you know, managing a large group of people uh, is, it can be a bit of a challenge and especially you know, with a big language barrier and lots of different ways of doing things. So that's the challenge, it's also what's interesting about it. It may be a stressful job at times, but this TD says it's all worth it for the love of the sport and the experience. While the focus during the Olympics is traditionally on athletes, John's role is quite challenging as well. So if you see him around town before he heads to Sochi, be sure to pass on your well wishes. If you ever miss an episode or maybe a full show of Go See to Sky, not to worry, everything is online for you to view in HD. Simply visit youtube.com slash Whistler Shaw. Go See to Sky, we're your local voice. Coming up, when I made this record, I'd come home off the road and it was kind of like a bit of a cleansing. When I got home, I just picked up a guitar and started writing. 
We meet Vancouver's music gem, Matthew Good. The following are proud supporters of community programming on Shaw TV. Hairstyling and color services for Heather Butts are provided by The Loft Salon. TheLoftSalon.com Levitt Machinery services all the brands they sell anywhere in Western Canada. If you have big machines for moving stuff and they have a problem, Levitt can fix it. Need a lift? Stack it. Reach it. Lift it. Levitt. One in three Canadians know someone with Alzheimer's disease or another dementia. I'm one of those Canadians. September is World Alzheimer's Month and the Alzheimer's Society of BC wants you to get involved. Use your creative ideas, your outstanding talents, and your sizzling passions. We make it easy to create a unique fundraising event or join in someone else's. Do anything for Alzheimer's and help support people with dementia, their caregivers, and research for a cure. Let's get started at anythingforalzheimers.ca today. Welcome back to Go See the Sky. I'm your host, Heather Butts, in Whistler's Creekside. When you're not spending some time on the hill, it's important to pamper yourself, and Whistler Village has all the spas you need. But what about your four-legged friend? Well, they're important too. Our Vancouver reporter, Dunya Tozi, explores the world of pet spas. <laughs> Getting a haircut, their nails done, and having a luxurious bath. These dogs are being pampered at Spa Dog in Vancouver. They have a pretty zen experience, I think. We do our best to try to make it as calm and enjoyable for the dogs as possible. So we have lavender essential oil, and all of our shampoos that we use have calming essential oils in them as well. But what makes this experience even more special is that it's fully organic and earth-friendly. People are going to get their dogs groomed but we can give them a healthy alternative choice that's healthier for themselves, it's healthier for their children, it's healthier for their household. And for owners Hilary Barkash and Adam Cole de Pietro, it couldn't be any other way because that's the way they live each and every day. We don't own a car, we actually bike everywhere. I occasionally take public transit, but generally we bike to and from Spa Dog. Uh, we eat organic, uh, we use organic cleaning products on ourselves, and we decided to extend that out to the dog world. Vancouverites are very organic, and they love their dogs, and so it was a perfect fit for us, and we've had a very warm welcome here. From products used in grooming to the furniture used in their store, Hillary and Adam have put in so much work to make sure everything they do is environmentally friendly. Our shampoo, our toothpaste, our ear cleaner and our bug spray, all of which we make in-house. They're completely healthy for the dogs and they're also biodegradable so it's safe to put into our water system. Bottling is made from 100% post-consumer recycled content. Labels themselves are made on recycled material. The tools that we use are also made from things like bamboo, recycled nylon, recycled polyester. There's very little plastic. Everything tends to be made of wood or metal, sustainable materials. The shelves behind me came from Craigslist and we just refurbished them themselves, uh, as did our desk. A lot of our signage and construction materials came from Habitat for Humanities Restore, which is uh, secondhand construction materials. They also purchased electricity from a 100% renewable resource. In addition to our normal hydro bill, we pay a premium to Bullfrog Power and that guarantees that the energy that we use is supplied by low impact hydro, wind power or solar power projects. And even leftover dog hair gets composted. There's a small local company that comes in and picks up our dog hair and takes it down to Langley and puts it into compost and it grows organic vegetables. We feel better physically, we feel better emotionally, we feel uh, like we're making a difference. It seems common sense, but without the environment there is no us. Right now their shampoo is available for sale at their salon, but very soon so will their toothpaste, bug spray and ear cleaner. And they're in the process of building an online store to make this available for everyone. Well, that looks like quite the place if you are a four-legged furry friend. Well, raised in Coquitlam, Matthew Good is definitely one of Vancouver's musical gems. With a 20-plus year career under his belt, he welcomed us into his home to talk about his brand new album.
Matthew Good just released his sixth solo album, Arrows of Desire, with a video for the first single, Had It Coming. Just before heading out on tour, he invited us to his home to share a bit about the record and his life. Orders a drink and then fans got him, then fans got all him. Savage company will smile. What can you tell us about Matthew Good outside of music? That's what everybody sees, but <laughs> what goes on here? Well, God, mayhem. It doesn't usually look like this. So you, it's usually mayhem, but uh, kids running around and such. But, uh, you know, a lot of work. The property's a lot of work, right? Horses are a lot of work and that kind of thing. So, um, you know, I mean, when I do, when, I, when I'm working, it's an interesting kind of thing because my office is upstairs, but um, our, where the kids watch, like, treehouse cartoons and stuff is, like, right two floors below it yeah. and so it just tunnels straight up to where I'm working so if you listen to all the demos like for the new record you can hear like you know like Caillou in the background when I'm trying to do vocals and stuff it's pretty fun so you go to bed and dream you wake up hungover on a beach in the sunshine and you walk into the sea like nothing's ever been here you gotta ask you I mean tell us about the record what do we need to know about this well I mean the last record I kind of I mean, I did a lot of things, a lot of experimental stuff that uh, I've wanted to do for quite some time. So when I made this record, I'd come home off the road and it was kind of like a bit more of a, I went back and listened to a lot of older stuff of like kind of a bit of a cleansing. <laughs> I was like, okay, I kind of did that, and, you know? And just while I was listening to that, the kind of music I was when I got home, um, I just picked up a guitar and started writing. And uh, I wrote uh, Via De La Rosa first. And, and then the rest of the record just kind of flowed from there. Well, we've seen with like the last few records, I guess it's every two years, pretty much, they're coming out. This is a simpler record in a way you were just saying, but I mean, was this a much quicker process compared to the last couple? Well, I mean, Life's Been Dangerous Species was a really compl complex album to, to do. And plus, beside the drums and some of the guitar bits that I just, I had, uh, you know, the guy, who, my guitar player at the time, come in and do just to give it a different feel than me. Um, I played everything on it except, you know, except for the, you know, the woodwinds and the horns and the strings and stuff. So it was very labor intensive as far as I was concerned. And then when, you know, I, you do something like, like Arrows of Desire, I brought my actual live band in. I got to sit there and kind of, you know, make sure everything was, you know, going the way I wanted it to, as opposed to me doing everything and kind of going, you know, oh, I've got to go and review that. It's What does it mean to you to get to play the hometown show, coming back, ending up the tour? Oh, it's always, you know, it's always good to finish at home. It's an interesting thing for me in a little, you know, in a way, because I haven't lived downtown now for, I mean, I lived downtown for, you know, 17, 18 years. So I, you know, I mean, I've, I've had shows throughout my career where I've walked to shows. But, you know, I live out here now, so, you know, it's kind of like I'm, I'm on the bus still downtown and that kind of thing. So it's interesting. It's, it's interesting to do, but it's great. It's great because, you know, you're, you get to see family and everyone comes out and stuff. So, and then, you know, of course you're home again. So you get your wife and your, your kids are there and that sort of thing. This tour ends November 28th at the Orpheum Theater. Ticket information is at matthewgood.org. At the Matthew Good Ranch, I'm Paul McClellan. It's always great to see Canadian artists doing so well and producing fantastic music. Thank you so much for joining us on this episode of Go See the Sky. We'd love to hear from you. Get in touch with us at facebook.com slash go see to sky. Later in the show. I'm not an astronomer by any stretch. I'm a guy who just is enthralled by the night sky. We explore images that will take you beyond our own galaxy. The following are proud supporters of community programming on Shaw TV. Heather Butt's wardrobe is fitted by Peak Performance. Peakperformance.com Whether you're pursuing a television career or looking for a new leisure activity, we invite you to join the Shaw TV Volunteer Program. 
you can gain valuable hands-on experience and acquire skills ranging from camera to floor directing. We're looking for high school or college students or adults who are eager to learn. Shaw TV is currently accepting volunteer applications. Contact us today. We're there to bring it home. Shaw TV, your local voice. Retirement Concepts Weather Report on Shaw TV takes you from around the world to across the country to your own backyard. Retirement Concepts Weather Report on Shaw TV gives you the inside information on the outside world. Daily on Shaw TV. Welcome back to Go See the Sky. I'm your host, Heather Butts in Creekside. Now, not every kid enjoys or excels at sports, but that doesn't mean they aren't athletes. And that's the philosophy behind personal trainer Mike Howard's new program, geared towards youth that are a little non-traditional. Johanna Ward tells us what it's all about. These youth are all in the same fitness class, and all for different reasons. Take Derek. Last year I was trying out for rep hockey, and I wanted just to get my agility up and just always be in shape. I didn't really like competitive sports at school and everything, and I still wanted to get exercise to be fit and everything. That's Sarah's reason. As for her brother Daniel, he's a soccer player and wants to increase his speed. All right, go! <laughs> Seems like it's working, thanks to program founder Mike Howard. Everybody Moves is geared towards teens and preteens who may not necessarily gravitate towards traditional sports. Uh, they may be those that are involved with sports as well, but may, may not fit the traditional mold of what we perceive as an athlete. Each one hour class combines a warm up, strength training, fun cardio, a cool down, and even a healthy snack. It's called the Monster Walk. So we do both collaborative games and what I would call friendly competitions. Well, I really like the boxing because um, it feels more like fun rather than exercise. It's a really fun atmosphere. What kind of stuff do you like the best? Uh, I really like boxing. So does everyone, apparently. <laughs> they tend to enjoy and gravitate towards things like boxing. And a lot of them are good at it, and we were able to find some untapped potential with a lot of these kids as well. The fun and functional training sessions are tailored to meet individual needs within the supportive group setting. I really like it. It's, all, it's always fun. Like He's nice to talk to and he, he uh, also listens to you. And if there's something you don't feel like doing, he'll either uh, find a different option or make it a lower difficulty. So it gives them that confidence and confidence begets fun which begets um, you know inspiration to continue to do these things. Good job guys. This doesn't mean the class is easy. It does mean it's enjoyable. Well it seems like more like fun than it seems like a fitness class. Yeah it does. But I still get um, pretty sweaty. Would you, would you even notice if I put this on? It's only 20 minutes. Go for it. So we do games and we we just try to infuse a little an element of excitement to it, right? How long do you guys do this for? Uh, how long have I been doing it for? Four seconds. Oh, man. Well, our next artist may not consider himself an athlete, but he certainly is active, and it's well worth it. His images take viewers beyond our galaxy. The bonus, we get to experience them from the comfort of our couch. the magic of the night sky. It only reveals itself to a select few. The naked eye could never see a rolling ocean of clouds in this way. A celestial conjurer is needed. Photographer David McComb is one of those starborn. Today's pilgrimage brings the Whistler resident up Rainbow Mountain. Snow falls in the late afternoon, but if the weather reports and star charts he checked earlier in the day prove right, the skies will clear with the rising moon, and his four-hour hike may gift him imagery such as this. I'm not an astronomer by any stretch. I'm not an amateur astronomer by any stretch. I'm a guy who just is enthralled by the night sky. Like an astronaut, David's job is to travel into the unknown alone. Perched high on mountaintops, it's just him and the night sky. The further away you can get from light pollution, the better. 
So when you come out, if it's a really dark sky, you can see the Milky Way beautifully. The professional photographer of eight years only began to navigate this sky trail three years ago. I don't use telescopes at all. I just use my DSLR. When I'm shooting the moon, I'm shooting with maybe a 400 millimeter lens, and that's about as close as I'll get with it. The camera captures what the naked eye can't. I'm leaving the lens open for a long period of time, you know, 10, 20, 30 seconds, maybe longer. And it's just absorbing more light, more light, and picking up really dark light that uh, is sort of hidden in the background, but it can come through on the, the sensor. And that's especially true with things like uh, the Aurora Borealis, for instance. In Whistler, we're further south, it's harder to see a really good Aurora Borealis, so that's when the camera can really help. It can sort of bring in some of the colors. Everything is done manually. Focus points on dark nights are set up in the light, and time lapses for the short film he is creating out of 20,000 photos leaves David's fingers out in the cold. The whole night, all kinds of different things are happening, but while that's going on, the light conditions can change quite dramatically. So I don't trust the automatic setting for exposure on a camera, so what I do during the night when the lighting and the environment changes, I'll manually change the camera settings as we go along. David's life begins at sunset and rests at sunrise. The night owl chases the moon as it makes its pilgrimage over Whistler Mountain. His luminosity is both seen and felt, leaving viewers as starry-eyed as the photographer himself. The best part is when I don't have to do anything and it's just doing its thing and I can just sit back and enjoy it and appreciate it as much as the camera is. A man of the dark, a worshipper of the sky, a star is born right here on Earth. David McComb certainly produces some stunning images. Keep an eye out for his work when you're in the Whistler area. Well, that is this episode of Go See the Sky. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Whether you're pursuing a television career or looking for a new leisure activity, we invite you to join the Shaw TV Volunteer Program. You can gain valuable hands-on experience and acquire skills ranging from camera to floor directing. We're looking for high school or college students or adults who are eager to learn. Shaw TV is currently accepting volunteer applications. Contact us today. We're there to bring it home. Shaw TV, your local voice. One in three Canadians know someone with Alzheimer's disease or another dementia. I'm one of those Canadians. September is World Alzheimer's Month and the Alzheimer's Society of BC wants you to get involved. 
Use your creative ideas, your outstanding talents, and your sizzling passions. We make it easy to create a unique fundraising event or join in someone else's. Do anything for Alzheimer's and help support people with dementia, their caregivers, and research for a cure. Let's get started at anythingforalzheimers.ca today.